Spence explains the difference between his fight with Terrence Crawford and Mayweather Pacquiao. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Cardinal Red, Cardinal Red Sports. Let's talk about it. All right, y'all. So, Earl Spence recently gave an interview, and he explained to the people of the boxing world why he feels like his fight with Terrence Bud Crawford will be much different than the Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather fight. And I wanted to get my two cents on what Earl had to say. Some of it I agree with. Some of it I think is a little wishy-washy. All right, so Earl said that he feels like to start off with that the biggest difference is the skill sets you know he feels like that him and Terrence Crawford are the best at welterweight and you know perhaps the best in the business at this point and it could be argued you know Javante Davis Devin Haney all these other names they can all be argued but there's no doubt that at welterweight these are the two biggest superstars for now you know for this moment and you know when you compare that point to Mayweather Pacquiao that's why I have to say some of it's a little wishy-washy because actually Mayweather and Pacquiao were much bigger superstars than both of these guys you know you could say that just Manny Pacquiao alone was way more popular than both of those guys put together you know so I think Earl has a point with what he's trying to say you know as far as their popularity for the moment in the here and now when it comes to the welterweight division yes they are what Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather used to be when it came to the welterweight division but on a smaller scale you know they're not as worldwide known as Mayweather Pacquiao so you know on that point I, I disagree a little bit with what Earl had to say. I didn't personally see undisputed talent. Understand why Haney is, is not a, a puncher because he doesn't punch properly. I'm not trying to, you know, rain on nobody parade. You know, truth be told, man, these young guys aren't getting the lessons, bruh. There's, there's no teachers in the game of boxing and it's evident. Skill set, it's a lot of things missing, bruh. I don't even see no rhythm. I don't see no timing. I don't see no execution, bruh. It's levels to this. And these guys ain't sharp, bruh. Now, why was he saying he feels like it's going to come down to the skill sets? He said he feels like he does everything in the boxing ring correctly. And he feels like he throws his jab perfectly, which I agree with. He said he does hooks really well. Any other punch that a boxer can formulate, he said he feels like he does it on the highest level of, of welterweight boxing. And... You know, I would agree there. You know, I think that there are some things he doesn't do perfectly. You know, his footwork isn't perfect. His speed combination punching isn't perfect. You know, he's not that type of fighter anyway, so I wouldn't expect him to be perfect in those aspects. But if you're talking perfection and you want to make it seem like you're the most perfect fighter out there, there's things that you do wrong. There's things that Terrence Crawford does very wrong. But no one fighter is perfect perfect at everything you just try to perfect what benefits you and like Bruce Lee said you know forget about the rest you don't need the rest do what benefits you and and discard the rest so you know I, I agree there I do think that Earl Spence has some of the best intangibles in the boxing ring you know he does a lot of things greatly and you know he's on he's going to be on that legendary status later on when it's all written down in the history books now what i disagree at is this point he said that the real difference will be the fact that mayweather and pacquiao was so much older when they fought each other listen i agree that the the may pack fight was marinated way way too long you know they should have done it as much younger fighters but I really don't think that that's what impacted the fight. Now, if you really feel like it was the age that impacted the fight, then you have to start bringing up new questions about that fight. You know, what was it about the age that was keeping Mayweather 
from wanting to engage with Manny Pacquiao because there was very little engagement being had in that fight and it was all being initiated by Manny Pacquiao. Really, Manny Pacquiao was the aggressor the entire fight and a lot of people felt like that's why Manny Pacquiao won the fight because whenever there were opportunities to throw punches and Mayweather wasn't throwing punches, Manny Pacquiao was actually throwing punches. So a lot of people felt like he landed more than Mayweather in that fight and should have got denied, but it is what it is. Nobody wants to live in the past, you know, but there are things, once again, that need to be talked about if you feel like it was the age that was hindering that fight. I don't. I seriously don't think it was the age at that point because Manny Pacquiao had like six other fights that he dominated. You know, Floyd Mayweather, I believe, had three or four other fights that he dominated after the Maypac fight. And, you know, a host of exhibitions that he's been dominating. So, it couldn't have been the age at that point. And if it wasn't the age, then what were the other factors, you know, that played a role to why the fight was so lackluster? And I keep going back to one thing. It was that Mayweather knew about the shoulder injury of Manny Pacquiao and if you think about it logically he didn't have to engage because he already knew Manny Pacquiao's engagements even though he was the aggressor in the fight were going to be limited because he could, he could only throw with one arm you know and any logical person who's watched that fight or re-watched that fight can tell you that there was obviously something going on with Manny Pacquiao this was not the Pacquiao that we've seen in the in the past, this is not Pacquiao that we saw in the next five fights, you know, or four fights, because the Ugas fight was very similar to the Mayweather fight. He still was throwing punches in the Ugas fight, but his foot movement was very off. His leg movement uh, wasn't the same as it had been previously. So anybody who watched it, you know, with a open eye, you know, and with a constructive eye and with constructive criticism would have told you there was something going on during that fight now i might be wrong that it, it might be that the age was the limiting factor if you ask me it was the fact that mayweather knew about the shoulder injury and he knew well i probably don't have to do a lot to win this fight you know just don't let this guy hit me and i'll probably win the fight so you know, that's why I really, really disagree with Earl when it comes to comparing those two fights. I don't think it was the age. I, I think it was the knowledge that Mayweather was privy to before the fight. And I don't think it'll be a, a factor of age or why the Terrence Crawford fight would be the best fight, you know, or would end up being one of the best fights of these two guys' career. I think it's going to be, you know, skill sets, you know, welterweight skill sets. I don't know nothing about being a heavyweight champ. Only I know I know how to fight, right? I'm a nigga, right? You know, really, 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 really. I'm not saying like I'm a black person. I'm a street person. I'm so, I don't even want to be a street person. I don't even like typical street people. But that's just who I became and what happened in my life and the tragedies in life made me that way. But, you know, I'm Mike. You know, I'm not malevolent or anything. I just am. And I just want to just, just live my life. And uh, I know you guys talk bad about being a guy to really bad snake about there about me but you know i'm gonna make sure you talk about me <clears throat> your grandkids and kids after that are gonna know about me these two guys have been welterweights for a long time and they've been fighting you know maybe not the best competition in a lot of situations it's not their fault it's what's available you know at the time so you can't really blame either guy for their resume but there were certain situations to where you know certain fights could have been made but Hey, it is what it is at this point, but both guys' resumes have been kind of lackluster. So when they go in and they fight each other, I would expect it to fight to a draw because their talent levels are so high, but I know that's not going to happen. And I really see Spence being the victor in this just solely based off of his competition level. It's been better than Terrence Crawford, and you, know, you would think that he has more experience than Crawford when it comes to fighting high-level talent. So, I agree with Earl on some stuff, disagree on other stuff. Y'all let me know what y'all think about what Earl Spence had to say. Is this fight similar to the Maypac, or is it going to surpass the Maypac fight in talent level and pay-per-view sales? Hit that like button, fun mad, sure, sure, sure. 
Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Holler at me on all social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. More than likely to get a response on the tube. So holler at me over there. If you'd like to collab, feel free to hit my Gmail. It is flockofcards at gmail.com. And we are man. Forty fifth Street, West End, Louisville, back in the day. And I seen a few niggas let it use them up. And I seen a bunch of niggas, cause I moved a bunch. I seen fiends, gangsters, niggas bout they bread. Nigga try and hustle and they turn up dead. And a nigga see me rolling. Think I'm about that money, cause they see my teeth golden. I ain't got no dope in. Uh, you know I'm trying to bless you. My flow was special, and plus I rap too. Uh, and it ain't just downtown, but sport nigga hustle on this ground. Uh, niggas outside, they slangin' that vibe. Chicks on the side, they slangin' that. Nigga like me, they make you see. Chicks make it money, they breathe. I know, I said, everybody gotta get paid. You might see me in the ATL in a couple of days uh, And I ain't at the underground I'm somewhere off I-20 and I'm puffing a pack That boy Young Keys, he about his business Representing spotless to the day that he's finished And a nigga see me rolling Trying to hate because he see what I'm rolling I'm the one she chose, man I ain't disrespect you, don't make me check you The car won't wreck, dude Even though I'm gone off the brown Plus I'm on my way downtown Blazing the pound Gray Lincoln town Car cruising, cruising The back of that bitch that's you with keys Nigga, I'm about that cheese You can do what you do, but you ain't fucking with me That nigga sauce, huh? Lay the beat, and plus I'm off one crazy weed. And when you see a nigga rolling, that's why my eyes be low and swollen and holes in the ride. Uh, sad B. Just trying to get paid, you dig? So I'ma spit. You do what you do, I'ma do what I do. Uh, uh, uh. Niggas outside, they slanging that vibe. Chicks on the side, they slanging that. Nigga like me, you make you see me. She can make it money, I know. I said, everybody gotta get paid.